Hi, I'm Rolf for Sluice with Agcap Network Systems. We've been working with Cisco Systems for a long time, and they are a great partner. There's one thing that they do, though, that is um, kind of difficult to deal with. They make up new words and then expect everybody to know what they mean and, and why they're important to them. And the latest one that I ran across last week, maybe I was a little slow on this, was the Cisco IWAN. And so I dug a little deeper into that, and it stands for the Cisco Intelligent Wide Area Network. And I really hate marketing terms like smart and intelligent, because people are smart and people are intelligent, but systems aren't. So I figured I'd explain, why do you care about the Cisco IWAN? And as I looked into it a little bit more, it's very, very cool. So the big deal is that everybody's got mobile devices. We know that. Uh, people are starting to use more voice, more video, uh, cloud applications, things like that. And I'm sure you noticed, if you have anything to do with the, the pricing on your wide area network, is that your wide area network price is still pretty expensive, because private networks are expensive because it's deterministic, you know exactly, you have a service level agreement, you know exactly uh, how much stuff is going to get to where you need to go. And so most organizations that have centralized applications or voice systems or video still operate in the hub and spoke type topology um, with the hub in the middle and then they connect to uh, MPLS wide area network. Um, maybe they have a data center hooked in here and then each of their uh, branches are all hooked into the same uh, MPLS wide area network. And this works great except um, with everything connecting to the internet uh, here at the hub and all the stuff uh, controlled from the internet at the hub and everybody wanting to go to the internet, it's costing more and this bandwidth is really starting to get used quite a bit. So there's various things that, that folks can do to try to um, improve the bandwidth utilization of it. But then the other thing is, people look at uh, business class DSL and business class cable and they say, wow, that's a lot of bandwidth for not very much money. I mean, you can get 100 megs um, for you know, less than $100 a month. And so this is what Cisco IWAN allows you to do. What allow, it allows you to get an internet internet connection at each site or multiple internet connections at each site. So you get one from DSL and you get one from cable. Hey, you can even get one from uh, 4G from uh, you know, Verizon or AT&T or whoever. And then it puts this into a complete uh, dynamically set up system that lets you treat those internet connections, multiple internet connections with an with a encryption over it through a VPN as a wide area network. And by using multiple ones of these and figuring out how well it's working and what the latency is and, and things like that, by being able to dynamically load balance and shift across these different branch office internet connections, we can get a much better effective pipe back to our servers at the hub than we can by just um, adding more, uh, more uh, bandwidth to the MPLS network. And we can do it at a much better price. So let's talk through a little bit of what we need to do in order to enable this. And Cisco IWAN uses some existing Cisco technologies and some relatively new uh, technologies. But the upshot of it is you're going to get much better branch network performance for connection back to your main site. Uh, and then on the roadmap, there's some things that allow for better direct connection to the internet for cloud applications uh, from the remote sites as well. So one of the uh, technologies that we use has been around for a while and it's, uh, it's a really neat VPN technology. So VPN, so a virtual private network as opposed to a private network, MPLS being a, a private network, it's, it's uh, doing encryption. And a lot of organizations can do IPsec encryption and that's where you just take your uh, two endpoints and, and you do an encryption between them. What Cisco created uh, was something called Dynamic Multipoint VPN. VPN. Uh, let me get that right. DMVPN, Dynamic Multipoint VPN. And this creates uh, IPsec tunnels on the fly. So instead of having to uh, say you wanted to make a phone call or send some information from this branch to this branch and you want to go over the internet, instead of having to go one tunnel to the head end 
and then another VPN tunnel over the uh, internet connection uh, to the branch office, the dy dynamic multipoint VPN scales very uh, easily without having to put in direct entries to dynamically create a tunnel over the internet from one branch to another. So that, we've been using it that way for a while. Uh, but what we do in order to convert to the Cisco Intelligent WAN is we actually create dynamic multipoint VPN tunnels over every form of connection that we have. So say we have four connections coming out of this branch. The first thing we do is create one DMVPN tunnel over the MPLS. So, I mean, your MPLS is already, you know, pretty much uh, a private network, but we're making it even more private by doing encryption over it. Then we create another DMVPN tunnel here, another one here, and then another one here, and then all of a sudden we've got four different paths all encrypted from the branch office to the central site. And then we set up routing. Now, normally what we would do with any kind of internal routing, like internal BGP or EIHRP or any other routing protocol, is just say, okay, what's the best path? And we're going to use that one. But that's not what we want to do in this case. We want to use a different technology called performance routing. And performance routing um, is more of what you want. Performance routing monitors the effectiveness of the path and load balances the information over all the paths. So if, if all of a sudden maybe your uh, DSL isn't working so well at one location uh, one at, for a certain time, it'll turn that off. Or if we're getting more bandwidth out of one uh, system or another, it'll, it'll um, prioritize sending the information through that. And to figure out how, that, how well that path is working, we use two other technologies uh, that Cisco's had for a while. So the first part of the IWAN is the dynamic multipoint VPN. The second part um, is that we use NetFlow. And this is, we figure out what kind of throughput we're getting on each path. And then, throughput. And then we also use um, a different uh, way of, of judging things, IPSLA. So we've done this in voice for a while. It's the IP service level agreement. And basically what you do is you take a Cisco router and you say, okay, I'm going to send something that looks like a voice packet over this link. And I'm going to measure how quickly uh, it, it works, and I'm going to measure the jitter and the latency, because we know in Cisco Voice and all IP Voice that we want less one-way voice latency, we want less than 150 milliseconds, we want less jitter than 20 milliseconds, and if we got that, we're going to have a good voice connection. So what we're able to do using performance routing is over these dynamic multipoint VPN tunnels, we're able to measure the actual effectiveness of these tunnels using NetFlow and IPSLA. Then, based on that information, we can take, um, we have a policy router here, um, which is the, the, the manager of the system, the master controller of the system, and we tell the, ma the master controller system, tells the, the, the routers which of these paths to use. And we do it based on policy. So we set maybe two or three or four different policies, saying, okay, we want the voice to go over the best one. We want the... Um, uh, enterprise resource planning traffic to go over uh, the, the second best one, we want video to go over the third best one, and we want uh, everything else just to be load balanced evenly. So that would provide us a good policy to be able to send information over that. So by using these different technologies in uh, the Cisco Intelligent WAN, controlled by the, the master controller uh, with all the different border routers, we're able to make much better use of these business class DSL um, and cable and also 4G connections at the, at the branch router. So that'll effectively increase the bandwidth from our branch routers to our central site without increasing our cost. It also increases the reliability. Because what if your MPLS goes down? Or what if one of your other paths go down? The other paths will still stay up. And we can take reliability even higher. Price is always part of the design factor. But because this is true routing capability, we could do two routers at the head end, of course, and we could do two routers at each of the branches if we want. We can get, um, we can get to no single point of failure uh, and make sure that the communication stays up all the time. Now, um, 
that takes care of increasing the YRA network speed. And that's going to do pretty good for most people because we still want to send all our internet connections through our main site where we can do web filtering, where we can do a, a next generation firewall like the source fire uh, firewall uh, and do all sorts of other things at the head end. However, on the roadmap from Cisco is the ability to um, send to go to the internet at each of these branches as well. So, Cisco routers have always had the capability of having a, a good stateful firewall on them, but these days we don't want to rely just on stateful firewalls. That's why Cisco uh, bought SourceFire uh, uh, last year. And so what we're going to be able to do on the new routers that are coming out from Cisco is to be able to actually run uh, an instance of SourceFire on them. And these new routers are pretty neat. Uh, in fact, they are uh, starting to ship pretty soon. I've got a little uh, diagram of them. But it's the Cisco 4300 and 4400 series routers. And there's a huge change in these routers uh, compared to uh, the Cisco routers of the past. Now, you can use all this um, intelligent WAN technology on the 2900 series routers and the ASR 1000s. They're fully capable of handling all this stuff. But for in the future, we want to use the Cisco 4000 series routers because the 4000 series routers, the 4300 uh, and the 4400 series routers, which are going to be size replacements um, for the for the 2900s, they have a completely different way of running. These are multi-core routers, so they have multiple processor cores in them, and they're running Linux with KVM on them, kernel virtual machine. So it lets us have multiple virtual machines on them. So the roadmap of this type of routing is to be able to run uh, Cisco applications in the same box as the router on the virtual machines. So we'll, we'll get, next year we're going to be able to, I hope next year, uh, run SourceFire as one of those virtual machines. Um, I also expect that we're going to be run, able to run call manager subscribers on them so that we can have a true uh, remote site um, uh, voice uh, recoverability. So it's really going to take the Cisco routers uh, that already have a bunch of great capabilities integrated together and then add even more capabilities to them. So this will mean that your branch offices can have the, the full um, internet security policy in their direct connection to the inter internet that's load balanced at the remote sites as well as at the central site. So there's a lot of exciting things about the Cisco Intelligent Wide Area Network. Yeah, I don't like the term, but I really like what it's going to be able to let us do for our customers uh, for unified communications, lowering the wide area network cost, and improving the bandwidth uh, at every location. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.